Hello, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Go to any pharmacy or go online and you will find all kinds of medical tests that you can take on your own. Everything from allergies to cholesterol levels, HIV, pregnancy, even eye exams. You can diagnose yourself without going to your doctor. Or can you? How accurate are these do-it-yourself tests? What do you do with the results? Is it better to do it yourself or let your doctor handle it? Up next on Another View on Health, we'll talk about medical home testing with Drs. Khadijah Jordan and Christina Ramsey and my co-host, cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. Stay tuned. Another View on Health will be right back. Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. According to the ads, home medical tests can detect early cancers, heart disease, aneurysms, and the silent killers that are often mixed in a typical exam or routine blood test. Online tests promise to make the most of your busy schedule by providing you with tests and results sometimes in just one day. They are promoted as you taking control of your health. But is that what is actually happening? Joining us to talk about it on Another View on Health today is board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Khadijah Jordan. Hi, Khadijah. How are you? Hello. Very well. Thank you for having me, Barbara. Thanks so much for being here. On the phone joining us is optometrist, Dr. Christina Ramsey. How are you, Christina? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And my co-host always for Another View on Health, Dr. Keith Newby. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm doing great. Great. So before we talk about these home tests and whether or not they are the right kinds of tests and should we be doing this ourselves or leave it to you all professionally, (laughs) um, I want to ask about a test that I've seen advertised quite a bit lately, and that is the test for PrEP, which is supposed to be a new, um, not test, but the new medicine called PrEP, which is a new HIV prevention uh, pill. Dr. Jordan, can yes. you talk us about that a little bit? Actually, the uh, medication first came into uh, being in about 2004 when it was okay. approved by the FDA for treatment as one of the medications for treatment for HIV. And then they found that uh, people who were taking it who were not HIV positive actually helped prevent. So that's the PrEP mm-hmm. prevention of prophylaxis of HIV. And then you can also use the same medication, which it's marketed by Gilead um, as Truveda, mm-hmm. Truvada, Truveda, and uh, you can use it for post-exposure prophylaxis as well. If you take it within seventy-two hours, so you can take it if you if you had unprotected sex seventy-two hours within seventy-two hours, you can take this to prevent HIV. Yes, well, it's it's marketed for people who are high risk, not just anyone. You know, it's not like a morning after pill, just oh, for anyone, okay. and there are a lot of side effects. So I would definitely recommend a person talking to their primary care and maybe even an infectious disease physician first before they just automatically assume that it's right for them. Mm -hmm. But I have the FDA recommends pre-exposure prophylactic or PrEP uh, considerations for the following high-risk groups. One is gay or bisexual men who either have not had anal, who have had anal sex without a condom or been diagnosed with an STD in the past six months heterosexual men or women who do not regularly use condoms during sex with partners of unknown HIV status who are at risk, Mm -hmm. and injection of illicit drugs in the last month with sharing of equipment, and then lastly, serodiscordant heterosexual and homosexual partners, meaning one partner is HIV positive and you know it. And so uh, HIV in the Hampton Roads area is still pretty prevalent, isn't it? Yes. Actually, we have some statistics, um, and these statistics can be found on AIDSVU.org, AIDSVU.org. And 72% of people living with HIV in 2014 in our area were men, Mm. 28% women, and 69% of people living with HIV in 2014 were African American. 5% 5% Hispanic, Latino, 29% white. And then lastly, 80% of newly diagnosed uh, people with HIV mm-hmm. between 2011 and 2015 were men, and 20% were women. 
So it is something that is still very much out there. Um, I've, if you've noticed riding around throughout Hampton Roads, there have been lots of billboards and um, uh, advertisements asking you to check with the health department or check with your primary care physician. Um, and if you are particularly at high risk, uh, this might be a drug that may be helpful. And it seems to be covered uh, if you meet the qualifications. And I was just showing you before we started that the average month cost is about $1,500. Uh, and what's interesting in Africa, it's twenty cents for a month. Wow! And in Canada, it's one thousand dollars. So that's another conversation about yes, drugs, exactly. <laughs> right, Doctor Newby? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we yeah, have that we touched that this last this week? Or look what we had our last show. <laughs> the cost of medication. <laughs> Absolutely, right. the cost. But today we're going to talk about these home tests that that are just so prevalent and they're just all out there. And um, Doctor Ramsey actually. Lisa um, was talking to us about doing this show because you were so concerned about the fact that people are actually doing their own eye exams. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this uh, just recently, there's been um, at least one company and maybe two that have started uh, advertising and, and doing, try to do eye exams online. And so basically, you look at your computer. And they give you letters on the screen, and you press a button saying if it's clear, if it's blurry. Um, but the problem is that it doesn't take into account any other health problems that could be going on in your eye. So if you're a diabetic and your sugars are high that day and you take this test and then you get your glasses and it's completely off, then we don't know what happened. There's no uh, documentation about what your sugars were, what your prescription was. And so that's the problem with online eye exams is that we're taking out the health part completely and just doing the vision. And we do all of that in the office. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole people do recognize or need to recognize if they don't that you can diagnose many other diseases based on an eye exam, correct? Exactly, exactly. And and. Just this week, I've seen a patient with a, a disease that affects African Americans more permanently, uh, sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis in the eye. And so, and he had no idea. Mm. So there's just... Uh, what is sarcoidosis in the eye? Um, it actually, it causes what we call, what we call like candle wax drippings on the arteries and veins inside the eye. And it actually blurs his vision, causes cataracts, and is basically it's, treated by steroids. It sounds painful, is it? Um, sometimes if it spreads to other areas, it can be bad, but um, in the eye, it just really affects your quality of life. Mm, mm, yeah, because it affects your vision. I guess it's, yeah. deemed, it's deemed like a connective tissue disorder. That's right. So oh, okay. it's like when you think about like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, there's like a host of disease processes that, um, you, know, I, you know, I think there's still a lot of unknowns you know, especially with sarcoidosis and other things. It just so happens sarcoidosis affects the African-American community more prevalently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you may not necessarily, it's, it's like the treatment can be challenging, you know, and because, you know, and again, I think to echo um, the sentiment, you know, a lot of times you'll find people will try to do this self-diagnosis, but they don't have the background. You know, I mean, we, we train for years to know how to do some of this stuff and we're still learning every day but you know we've had the the background of anatomy physiology you know chemistry so we can mm -hmm. understand how to learn you know mm -hmm. but when you say if you had a, a you know an economics degree or some other degree that may be expert in that area but when you're trying to delve into self-diagnosis and you know i mean it's like anything else i mean we don't even I think we're bad at self-diagnosing ourselves, <laughs> you know. So I mean, so and we have training. You know, so exactly. I mean, we just I think a lot of it is sometimes you have to take a step back. I mean, and I, and I think there are certain tests that, my personal opinion, you know, I think are, are good. If 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 somebody has a test, say like an early cancer detection test, and it turns out to be positive, and they seek assistance, even if it turns out to be a false positive, they they made the effort to mm -hmm. go as a result of a but test But isn't that result. what one of, the, one of the fears is? Because if, if it is positive, say, for instance, um, and they, they become then so afraid to move forward, I mean, that, that's extending the time. Well, well it could, but it, it oftentimes may go the other way, too. You know, but regardless, say if you go and see a doc and they – I mean, I think we've all had patients that we've dealt with where you may tell them something that they don't necessarily want to hear, mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't come back to us either. I mean, you know, avoidance well, is avoidance, avoidance yeah, you know, avoidance I mean, re avoidance, regardless. Yeah. So I think we've all shared in in some of that. But 
the biggest fear is just knowing how to interpret this information. I think that's really what it boils down to, mm-hmm. you know, and because and, if and, and I know I, w- I would never take an online eye exam, to be honest with you, because, I mean, there's so many, you know, I mean, you know, there's so many unknowns to well, that. Well, the thing, I'm, I'm, I was sitting here thinking about, okay, you said, um, Dr. Ramsey, if you look mm-hmm. at the computer screen, Okay, how far away are you supposed to be from the screen? What yes. I mean, there's you know, a lot of variables. People lighting in the room, the lighting in the room. People set up exactly. their computers differently in terms of sizes. I mean, exactly. well, it just seems like there's so many things what, that could go what wrong. What about the fundal exam? You know, looking at the back of the yeah. eye, back looking the at eye. the blood vessels in the eye. I mean, there's exactly. so much more to an eye exam other than just the letters. Well, exactly. Let me ask you this, Doctor Ramsey. What about people who buy, who purchase glasses? online i mean and i know the frame i get the frame part because that's just a cosmetic but what about the prescription the lenses well just to go back to the frame though the frame is actually uh very important also because if you if you pick a certain type of frame and your nose structure doesn't support that frame you don't know that because Mm -hmm. you're buying it online and and also how that frame fits on your face are, you, are your ears up a little bit higher than other people's? Is it going to fall back behind your ears longer? And so the frame is actually, like, one of the po- most important parts. But anyway, talking about the lenses, the lenses actually in the frame, the funny thing is that there are 2,200 different uh, different types of lenses that wow. could go into the frame. And they're made by all different manufacturers. So even though we see a clear lens, um, the patient doesn't know that there's – all different types of measurements that need to happen, okay? Not just the PD. You know, people always ask about the pupillary distance between uh-huh. the two eyes. Mm-hmm. There's actually the optical center. How does the, the frame sit on your eye and where is the lens going to be? So there's all these other measurements that need to take place in order to have a good quality pair of glasses. But you know the downside of all of this mm-hmm. is that people will research they will yes. do what they want to do, and then they will need an urgent appointment with <laughs> us right. at Friday at 4 o'clock. That's right. And then we have to educate them and exactly. try to undo what they've what, done. What they've done already. Right. That's but, right. Okay, but I'm going to throw out the devil, be the devil's advocate Please. here. It's so much cheaper it is. than yeah. to come and go. <laughs> Well, in, but, in the but short not, term, but yeah, yeah. But not right. necessarily though. Okay. I mean, I, right. I go right down the same That's path because right. think about it, if you do a test and say it was it showed something, and then it was right, it was inaccurate or wrong, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then that means whatever disease process was ongoing may start to worsen, mm-hmm. which means then you have to get that urgent exam, you have to get that urgent procedure done whatever to undo what was done which means it's going to start tripling costs you know in the end i mean i understand what what people say and i understand Uh that but people you know one thing i've learned people will find a way to pay for what they want to pay for you know i mean you know when you really think about it and i'm not saying that as as a negative but you think about it you know, I mean, I've had people that will fuss at me about, you know, because, you know, unfortunately, the insurance companies, you know, they, they're they changing things now. They're, they're demanding higher co-pays. So see a specialist, you know, maybe 45 bucks to see a, a specialist. So if they go to see Beyonce, I guarantee you they will pay 100 some plus dollars. And wait in line. For those, yeah, wait Overnight. in line. Yeah, or, or some Adidas shoes but or the new pleasure. iPhone that's when not, it comes out. That's pleasure. That's well, not pain. Well, you know, and, and I hear them, but what we're talking about is your life. And, yeah. and the thing is, you know, and the, 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 the funniest part about it all is you'll have um, people sometimes who you say, okay, Granted, if you feel this need to try to self-diagnose and to do all these wonderful things on your own, that's fine. But at least do the other things you're supposed to do for yourself. Right. You know, you think about the types of diet. You see, if you're diabetic, you know, you can't go to McDonald's. You can't go to Cold St- you know, Stone or whatever ice cream place. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, so you got a sugar of, of 600 and you do all this stuff, but yet you don't want to go to the doc. I'm like, okay, well, if you're not going to go, at least do the things you're supposed to do. But then, yeah. but then when they come to us, then they want an, um, an uh, a treatment or remedy right then. Yeah. yeah. Or then they'll leave yeah. to get another opinion so, from so someone else. And we're paying more money. So, but <laughs> right. let, let me ask right. you this then, Dr. Jordan. Um, if someone has taken a test, I don't know, anything that, that you would handle from an OBGYN perspective. They had took the home test themselves. 
do you retest or do you just trust whatever the results were? Well, because that's another way of, of economically, sure. basically, you're paying twice. Well, for example, okay, I'm OBGYN. Mm-hmm. So they may take a home pregnancy test. And then, um, you know, urine pregnancy test, they have false negatives, false positives. And then urine only captures the hormone to a certain level. So when they come to me, then usually I will draw their blood. So mm-hmm. I will take it to the next level instead of repeating what they've already done. Yes. Okay. Okay. And same thing for you, Dr. Dr. Ramsey? Um, what happens is that uh, they come in and say, hey, I bought these glasses online. Um, can you check to see if they're made correctly because I'm having headaches. And so that takes time. And so we would have to charge someone and say, yeah, we could, we could totally check it, but we're going to have to charge you in order to, you know, take time to, to make sure that it's made within the requirements. Just, just out of curiosity, how often does that happen? Uh, I would say probably one out of, Four people wow. who get them online. Really? That, that's pretty, yeah. That's pretty. That's ex- yeah, that's, wow. that's, that's wow. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's about 25% um, um, online purchases aren't, aren't, oh. aren't made correctly. That's, wow. that's the problem. That, that's like, I, that's like <laughs> I, when I get get folks that uh, get like uh, the, um, uh, what do you call the ear um pieces you know, they want hearing aids oh, online hearing aids. Yes. <laughs> okay. yeah. and, they come in and you see, and they turn it up and you hear all this noise all over the place i'm like how do you hear anything through all that <laughs> right. i mean and it gets some jack leg <laughs> situation that they i mean of course you know, i'm a cardiologist i mean you know i just I'm, I'm talking to them they can't hear anything i'm saying because they got these things online yes. that, that i mean and, and i know they you know and unfortunately so we have there's a gullible sect of the community unfortunately so and, mm-hmm. and it's not their fault they don't know they they see and they see this stuff online or see it on tv and and they and, the, and, and their the marketing mind is so yeah good i mean i guess i've been the doubting it. thomas all yeah. my life on things so i'm always looking for where the scam is and anything but unfortunately so there are a lot of people that don't really they, they trust and, and there's nothing wrong with being trusting it's a great thing it's just unfortunately so the world doesn't always um uh, they're they're not trustful yes uh, and always. that's where you sure. run into an issue because you think about this all this is to make money I and mean, you know they're not doing this stuff for the goodness of the american population i mean they're doing this because they're trying to make money these companies are out for profit so are there tests that or or um or or well okay so blood pressure for mm-hmm. example yeah. Which is that something that you recommend as a cardiologist? Yeah, I that do. You talk about those to, automatic to be, cuffs. Yeah, yeah, to be able to take I, it, take their blood pressure. I, I, I tell you why I do that a lot because you try to, you know, one of the things you'll get this group of people with what they call it the white coat syndrome, where they get nervous coming to a doctor's office. So you, you know, sometimes you have to have something outside of them coming to the office to go on because I have had, I mean, and I can, I remember specific situations and I can think of this lady in particular who I, I've taken care of for years. And every time she would come to her, the office, her pressure was 220 over 120. Wow. Every That's time. You're a mean doctor. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no white coat. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, but, but she, it, but that was, a, I mean, every time she come, it would be that way. And I, and I told her, I said, listen, I can't keep looking at this pressure this high. We have to do something about it. I said, I've given you meds, and you, you go home, you don't take them because you say you're having dizzy spells with them. Mm-hmm. So I said, i got to put you in the hospital. i got to figure out what's going on before you have some massive stroke. So she finally, after about a year and a half, agreed to do this. So I put her in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then uh, two hours later, I check, we check her pressures, 110 over 80. Wow. I mean, mm-hmm. literally. And, wow. I, and I asked, I said, so you're telling me you're – Less nervous in the hospital <laughs> than you are in, in my office. I said, "What are you trying to say?" <laughs> you know, but but the legitimacy of it is in that setting. You know, really think about it. You leave them in the room by themselves. Nobody's poking them. Nothing happening. And they're watching TV. So the the relaxation part comes in, and then all of a sudden you see this true pressure. So what was happening is you give them a medicine, and they go home and take it, and their pressure is forty pressure or already, you know, seventy over forty right, after they lower. take this pill. Yeah. So they get dizzy, and they say, "I can't take this. I'm about to die." And and you can understand. So this to me helps me. Now I don't. The way I handle pressures like this is what I oftentimes do is if say if I recommend they get this automatic cuff, I say, "Okay." Like next week, bring it by the office. Let's correlate the numbers. 
So okay. we'll check it. So you check it yeah, to make sure make you make sure, sure it's that I'm working. getting numbers that I can see. And I say, you know, and I, I tell them they don't need all the bells and whistles. What I do need is some a simple push button, and it blows itself up. I don't want you, right. them having to do all this extra or right. anything. Mm-hmm. I said, and I want a memory in it so I can look at what the numbers are. Mm-hmm. You know, now of course I got some of my more innovative patients that will put the cuff on their brother. <laughs> and they get normal reading, so when it, oh, you don't, you don't even want to know. Just like it's, a I, finger stick. It is, I, yep. And and, and then my brother, who wow. uh, is a primary care doc, would tell me that he'll have patients. He started because he's really into diabetes, and he said he, he's had times where he's he started doing these group sessions. So he, I mean, he and he and I talked about this not too long ago, and he says he found out when he started doing group sessions what was happening a lot of times they would come in with these diabetic readings they were just making the numbers up because when they were he would have them try to demonstrate how they would check them. they didn't they know didn't how, to, how do to do it, it. What? so i mean and they didn't have any family members was doing it so they've been telling untruths the whole time about <laughs> these numbers so they were just making them up wow and uh so you run into that scenario too patients can be a little interesting at times <laughs> but, you know i found Dr. that Jordan. one in 20 searches on google are for health well, you know, and I was just getting ready to ask you about that because it, in in addition to kind of the home testing and so forth, people tend to go to the Internet to figure out what's wrong with them when they okay. are feeling a pain or they're mm-hmm. feeling dizzy or they're and they come in with all these different ideas. Does that make your job harder or easier? Does the, does the net help you or hurt you in well, terms of health? Well, for I, oh. most physicians, I and would I'm say to you in just a minute, most Dr. Ramsey, right. I would say they don't like it. Uh, for me, I do like them to bring the information, not to internalize it, but let's have a conversation. I like the patients educated, so at least I'm starting from somewhere. But if they already you know, have it in their mind that they, you have to dispel everything and prove this and prove that, then sometimes I'm just not the right doctor for you. Wow. Yeah, I can <laughs> understand that. It's, it's difficult. But... What about you, Dr. Ramsey? <laughs> yes, I, I, I agree with Dr. Jordan. I I love educated patients. Like, bring it in. We we, we can discuss it. Um, but just like she said, you know, don't believe that you have that. But be ready to explain your symptoms. Be be ready to explain why you know what's going on, so that we can work together to get mm-hmm. the the right diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm I'm generally okay with it. <laughs> what about you, Doctor yeah. Doctor Newby? I mean, you okay feel, with it? Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, I think a lot of it boils down to just this interpretation of the information, and and you know, I, I try to to caution patients: don't get too um, convinced of anything. It's just like everybody's been echoing today: don't internalize it, mm-hmm. you know, but bring it up. And I think it's definitely worth the discussion. Our job really is to you know, is to diagnose. I mean, and that's, you know, and I tell people all the time, a test is not, I mean, that's what the art of the history and physical is all about. You know, when when I tell people all the time, when you talk about heart disease, it's not so much doing like an EKG or an echocardiogram and that's going to tell you that there's a heart issue. You got to start, you got to talk to the patients. Okay, tell me what you've been feeling. Let's go through everything. You know, give me the rundown of the symptoms you've been experiencing. You got to find out how, when, where, and how, you know, and, and you, then you start, then the physical exam part comes into play, you know, because all shortness of breath is not heart failure. You know, all shortness of breath is not COPD, uh, you know, and that's where our job comes is to try to help differentiate the two. So I tell them all the time that test is, it's like if, if you use it the proper way, it can be helpful. But I wouldn't, I mean, like the, the I, test, I mean, I wouldn't even begin to think about using that. I mean, that's so surface level stuff and and again you don't know really how i mean you have to trust that company knows how to even you know to 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 perform it or to set it up on a computer that you could trust it at least with a lab test you could reconfirm or you know if if, you know there's data you can do to Uh to do that but this kind of stuff like that i mean how do you I mean, that's so surface level stuff. We talk about eye exam. I mean, I wouldn't even, I mean, I was shocked to even hear that on this right. show. I know. See, and, and, and Dr. Ramsey, that, that's why you're so concerned about this. Yes, yes. Because, uh, and we haven't, you know, as a profession, we haven't done a really great job at educating the, the patients about, you know, what we do. It seems real easy because we do it all day. Oh, that's, it must be easy because they do it so quick. Mm-hmm. But, but that's years of training, of learning you know, what the right lens is for each patient and how the frame fits on the face. 
<laughs> and um, how, what to look for inside the eye. Not even just diseases, but, you know, how do you work? Does one eye work a little bit harder than the other? We can balance your eyes so that your eyes are working together better. Mm-hmm. So that's not something that you can do online. Hold on just yeah. one second, Dr. Newby. If you're just joining us, it's another view on health. Today's topic is do-it-yourself medical testing. My guests are Dr. Khadija Jordan, a board-certified OBGYN, optometrist Dr. Christina Ramsey, and my co-host for AV on Health, cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. What do you have to say, Dr. Newby? Well, just, just a quick <laughs> echo when you talk about, uh, I mean, I've, I had to do, Four years of college, four years of medical school, three years of internal medicine training, and four years of cardiology to do what I do. Mm. But after I, high school. I, yeah, after high school. <laughs> now, as much training as that is, do you think I'm going to try to do Dr. Jordan's job? I, you know, exactly. I, I did, what, I think three or four <laughs> months of OBGYN as a medical student. And I hadn't seen any of that stuff <laughs> since then, but, but I guarantee you, you know, I mean, I remember spending a couple of weeks doing ophthalmology. You know, I mean, okay. I'm not going to do Dr. Ramsey's job. I mean, I, I, you know, I know my limitations, and I just that's the the point of the moral of the story is just want people to understand theirs. You know, if 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 I as who's been in years doing medicine, I wouldn't touch her either one of these two uh, professionals' job. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't do it because I don't have the experience, I don't have the know-how, I don't I don't delve into that enough to really understand. I, I can recognize an issue. And sometimes I may, you know, make say, a yeah, make a referral yeah, vice out. Versa. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, right. I mean, I, but I know my limitations and I try to stick to those. I mean, once you become dangerous when you don't understand that piece, mm-hmm. that's when you start becoming dangerous. Dr. Jordan, yes. what kinds of tests show up in your uh, profession, in, your, in the OBGYN field that people tend to do at home that you wish that they would just come on into the doctor's well, office? Well, I wouldn't say <laughs> so much test. Okay. But research as far as, and it's important to look at the source, okay. but their research as far as, say, induction of labor. Our practice, once you hit 39 weeks wow. of pregnancy, we offer induction of labor where we put you into the hospital, and this is close to your due date. We're not talking about taking a month off, but we try to help prevent the patient from going past the due date because that brings with it so many more complications, you know oligohydramnios, where the fluid dries up, the baby continues to grow and is bigger. You have more tears and all of that down below. Increased risk for C-section. So Mm -hmm. that's our motive. We're not doing it because I want to come on the radio (laughs) or because I want to play golf. We're doing it to help prevent a problem. But if you look online, you always see in many sites that induction of labor always leads to C-section. For our practice, Mm -hmm. that is not true. If you don't do anything in three days, then I'll send you home. If the baby's fine and you're fine, Mm -hmm. it may not have been time. Time. That's right. So that, uh, even with induction, we use medications first to soften the cervix. And I give an example of uh, to patients who are apprehensive that they may have so many different carpenters that they've uh, seen or worked with before. All the carpenters go to the same hardware store to get the wood, but how they use those ingredients is what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. And so all of the doctors have Pitocin available. We have the ripening agents, but how we use it. And so in our practice, we are very gradual and try to mimic the natural process. But if you look online, Pitocin, which is the same as your natural oxytocin, it hurts more than regular spontaneous labor. And that's not Mm. true. Mm. Um, Yogurt on tampons. How about that? What? Oh, Anybody my. heard about that one? <laughs> what are you talking about? Sorry. Sorry, Dr. Newby. I had to had to go there at least once. No, I mean, yeah, but I need, to, I need an explanation of that. Is yeah. that supposed to make it easier for insertion? Oh, no, what? no. Now, what is that I, no, I was switching to something else for treatment for a vaginal yeast infection. Yogurt, Yogurt on, on a tampon. tampon. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, wow. well, I don't prescribe that. I mean, yeah, but, but I mean, yeah, seriously, people do that. On, that's yes. what you find online that's is what right. she's saying. That's right. Even just that natural remedy have less or no side effects compared to a prescription. So when we talk about hormone replacement therapy and we talk about estrogen, I always start with the natural first, whether exercise, get rid of the caffeine, make Uh sure you're not smoking. And then, you know, if we want to add yams, which is a natural estrogen, or raspberry tea, or just some other things, those things are can be dangerous because you can't quantify it. 
compared to a prescription where the American Congress of OBGYN does prefer a prescription rather than bioidentical hormones, which are not mm. standardized, as well as over-the-counter. Black cohosh, we've heard all of these things. Mm -hmm. You just don't know how much. And those things, they are still estrogens and can still cause problems. Is that why a lot of the natural um, uh, uh, herbs and, and so forth aren't approved by the FDA in terms of treatment because, because you don't know how much you need to take? Well, that's one of the reasons. But just vitamins aren't FDA quote, approved. Mm. Mm. I tell you. So, Dr. Ramsey, what besides the, well, that's not besides because that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still having trouble with this eye exam thing. But what else, what else in your practice do you see people doing um, on their own uh, that you would wish that they would come to see you instead? Well, um, the big thing, and this is also an online um, natural remedy, mm -hmm. is baby's milk um, in the eye for conjunctivitis. Um, not baby's milk, uh, the, the mother's milk. Breast milk. Yeah, breast, breast milk. milk. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a mom. So, <laughs> um, so that they start putting that in their eye to try to get rid of either the viral conjunctivitis or bacterial conjunctivitis, and then it, it comes back worse because it's... Because it you're spreading been, pink eye. I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it means not, you're not doing anything to it. So, wow. you know, putting anything in your eye without, you know, you know, the doctor saying that's okay, then I would say let's not do that anymore. I mean, I've, I mean, people coming in <laughs> with the, trying to get rid of cataracts with, with drops. Well, where are they getting so. the breast milk first? Uh, well, and that's then the other that's question. Expo exposure to bodily fluids. Right. That's, that's the other question. I was like, well, where is that coming from? That's right. just kind well, of Well, you get that online, too, I bet. That's right. Yes, right. Just, you can just it. Dr. Newby, because wow. you know you can get sperm online. Seriously? Really? I knew yes. that. What's wrong with you, doctors? <laughs> I know. I, I, okay. I tell you, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> That's hard for me to ever be. <laughs> well, you know, when you asked, it made a comment earlier about the uh, FDA regulations. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the issue really becomes with, you know, and I get this with people. I have folks that will come and just also say they stopped all their meds because. They, because they wanted to do it all natural. Yeah, because Joe Blow down the street told them these meds gonna kill them. Mm -hmm. and, and they and they're all these natural herbs, natural, natural. And I always ask them, I said, and, and I said, how much do you spend for all this stuff? Which is mm. typically a heck of a lot more than you than think. The yeah, than, wow. yeah, yes. well, you know, in certain circumstances mm -hmm. that'll be. Yeah. And, and I asked them, well, well, firstly, how do you know this works? I mean, and, and say, so I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm can be condescending when I'm ready to be. I, I just, I try not to be, but sometimes they bring it out in you. But I, and I always ask that question, how do you know that this is going to work? I said, because wow. it's natural. I said, but that's, you're taking a pill. What about that pill? It's natural. If you came here with some bark and you were eating it off of a tree, I said, okay, I'm with you on that one. But that's right. I said, but you, you, you're taking a pill. How do you know what's in that pill? They still how, have to go to a warehouse. Yeah, somewhere. exactly. I said, so how do you know what's in that? Just because I put that on the bottle don't make it so. I said, I can put gas on this water bottle right here. That don't mean you put it in your car, it's going to run. I mean, you know, I said, how do you know? that it works i said at least we have data behind me we can sit down you can we can debate all day long about the validity of the data but at least that is a study is. you know and it's randomized you know data but you know doctors that. and all three of you can can answer can respond to this but you all get a, re a reputation of always prescribing pills that that if something is wrong here's a pill to fix it let's you know let's move on um first of all is that a fair assessment and then second of all how do you counteract that because you're basically trying to help that patient i'll start with you dr well, dr. i will dr. definitely Jordan. say it's not fair <laughs> okay. because all of us don't practice the same uh, mm -hmm. as i previously mentioned before you even asked this question i talked about how important it is to start with natural options first so but when patients do they come in with their preconceived notions or ideas about you and then sometimes, like Dr. Newby said, the conversation can go downhill. <laughs> but we, for our office, we try to not go to medications first. And actually then patients who, it's almost like going for a cold. We all know that an upper respiratory infection, infection right. from a virus <laughs> yeah. 
there is no prescription. But, you but know, everybody so, wants a Z-Pack. Everyone <laughs> wants a, a Z-Pack, some penicillin, some Keflex, anything. So they don't, at least even from the OBGYN, so they don't have to go to their primary care. So then I'm explaining to them what is the treatment. The treatment is to try to make yourself as healthy as possible. Let's work on your immunity. Let's do this, this, and this. And they, a lot of people don't want to hear that because if they're coming and they're paying a copay, they expect to leave with a prescription. Mm -hmm. Really? That's the mentality? I mean, honestly, because I'm thinking yeah. to myself, I don't, I'm happy when I don't leave with a prescription because I know that that's the one well, more thing. But then you think it was a wasted visit. It, it kind wow. of is, a lot of it is patient dependent, of course. For me, sure. maybe different for Dr. Jordan or Dr. Ramsey. For heart stuff, I mean, I'm finding that they, um, I mean, I, you know, it's kind of hit and miss. But I tell people all the time, I don't have to give you anything. I give, you know, I really go through this list of, of options. You know, I say, you know, we could do nothing. It's an option. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's an option. I say the second option is this, third option is that. Uh, but I tell them all the same thing. I say, if you come to me, if you're 100 pounds overweight and you're eating whatever you want to eat and you have hypertension and, and diabetes and it's leading to some kind of heart problem, I say, listen, this is the standard first thing is X. Weight loss, dietary straight, blah, blah, blah. I say, and you can oftentimes reverse it, but you got to commit yourself to it and do it. That's where the rubber meets the road for a lot of it's people. And, 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 and I tell them, I say, yeah. listen, we all got our crosses to bear. I got mine, you have yours. I'm not judging you. I'm just letting you know this is what you need to do. Now, whether or not you can do it or not, it's a different story. I say, and I've had people, I say, I'll tell you what, let's do this. You can't lose weight overnight. You know, so right. let's do this. We'll say we treat you for now with this medication and then if you can do x then we can reevaluate in six months you know a year and if you bring the weight down and blood pressure come down i don't need the medicine anymore and so, i can take you yeah off and i can take you off and and I, I mean i life is a negotiation you know and and but I, I do believe that if we did what we're supposed to do most times than not we wouldn't need certain medications but that's mm -hmm. where that's where the short. problem comes in. What about yeah. you, Dr. Ramsey? Are there certain things that people do that? Well, I was thinking, uh, I think uh, um, the medical profession, we've done, uh, gotten a lot better at talking to each other, um, talking about mutual patients to each other and not, you know, doubling down on uh, the same type of medicine between every doctor mm. because um, fish oil is great for the eyes, but it can also be used for other reasons. And so when I talk to the patient about what they're taking and um, I send a letter to their primary care doctor, we have that discussion about, you know, the natural, you know, more natural ways to, to help with their health. Mm. So I think we've done, we've done a lot better with communication and not just writing a pill and, you know, making sure we're talking to each other. But, you know, and you bring up a really good point because overall, if the doctors talk more to each other, Mm -hmm. um, the patient ultimately comes out better, That's Beca correct. you know, because, because everybody knows what the, what, what you're taking, what you've already taken, what you're being prescribed from someone else. Um, because if you don't do that, you could wind up being overdosed too. That's right. Mm -hmm. And know. that's come out with this opioid mm -hmm. epidemic. You know, mm -hmm. you get yeah. a notice from the board of pharmacy, you get a notice from everywhere, the pharmacy itself, uh, about, Here's a list of physicians who have prescribed these narcotics. Mm -hmm. Are you aware? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, because even as a patient, I've been asked. You know, I had um, with my um, uh, knee surgery, mm -hmm. and they gave me some narcotics today for that. And then I went to the doctor because I developed gout. Can you believe that? Mm. <laughs> my toe. <laughs> oh, no. But they had this whole list of all the drugs, you know, and everything well before I even got to the doctor's office. So the, it's just kind of interesting. Well, you have to, though. You know, I mean, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, you have to have that information. Let me, let me ask you guys a question. This is like totally off the subject of home medical testing, but since we're talking. <laughs> 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 but you bring up the opioid epidemic. And we know that within the African-American community, um, uh, heroin overdose, um, I'm not sure how much the, well, we know that crack is another big issue. Um, I'm not so sure about the um, crystal meth and, and all of that. But heroin, we definitely know, has been a big issue in the black community. How does it make you feel as professionals when now it's a health problem? As opposed to, you sure you want to go there? Yes, I do. <laughs> I really do. No, I really do because because it, it just it just from 
well, I'm yeah. not supposed to give my personal opinion. So, well, no, I mean, but... I think it's, it's legitimate. I mean, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but you know, I mean, it's, it is true. When things touch other people's homes, it, it impacts more. And I think now that you're seeing this is touching, you know, other other communities, other communities' homes. Yeah. Now, now that, it's a problem. yeah, now it's a problem. Whereas it was, it, was, it wasn't a problem. It, well, that's their problem. It ain't my problem. So I don't want to be involved. And I don't want to, you know, authorize you know, resources for this because, you know, just let them kill themselves, so to speak. Uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, and it's a shame, and I shouldn't say this, you know, I may get in trouble for this, but I, you know, I, I get joked on one of my favorite movies of all time was The Godfather. I, I love that movie. I've watched <laughs> yeah, it. So I mean, do I. <laughs> yeah. There was a scene in there when Marlon Brando and all the, you know, the mafia bo- uh, oh, bosses yes. were, and they were talking that when and they were trying to make this peace between Marlon Brando and one of the other mafia dons, and they and it was a comment made when they wanted to bring drugs in, and Marlon Brando thought it was a dirty business and was going to get everybody in trouble, which it ultimately which did. did. Mm-hmm. But you know, he one of them said, you know, uh, and I quote, said, "We're going to keep in our in our community, we're going to keep it among the dark people, the colors, they're animals anyway. Let them lose their souls." So when you really think about it, you know, and you hear the the thought process on how people perceive that they say okay we're gonna keep it as long as it stays in this community we're okay because you know we didn't worry about them right but when it came into a different community all of a sudden now it's a major issue and and you know and i I tend to stay out of some of those political discussions Mm -hmm. because you know we we can go round robin all day long and and i get in these arguments with people republican democrat you know (laughs) current president prior president and, and we get into all these major discussions about that and I know in, in my mind, you know, I'm not going to convince you and you're not going to convince me. So why am I continuing to argue this point? But you find with that particular issue, you know, you find that that is, is really what it all boils down to in my mind. And you can right. chime well, in on we that. we all but. know just ahead, statistically we know that this is not new. Yeah. yeah. That's a fact. Yep. Well, now that it has a medical bent a title, <laughs> as opposed, <now. laughs> title as, or a health title as opposed to a criminal title do we think that this is going to bring more resources to the african-american community in terms of a, fixing it or not it's going to be an african-american community there's going to be more resources delivered but where is going to be the question i mean and i would be curious to see how that's divided you know but i tell you you, you know, I always say follow the money you see where yeah. things really go. I mean, I, I'd be curious to see, but that's my thought behind it. I think there's going to be certain places that are going to get tons of resources. Other places, I'm not so sure. Mm-hmm. What about you, Dr. Ramsey? Um, well, I've tried not to prescribe any narcotics anymore. <laughs> 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 uh, but, yeah, it, it definitely it, it hurts. Uh, I, I saw, uh, it must have been the cover of Washington Post, and um, it was talking about the epidemic. And I'm like, where was this, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we were, we were having a, a different epidemic? So it, it just um, it just hurts a little bit that now it's a, it's a problem. Yeah. Now it's something we need to solve. And not only that, Go ahead, Dr. Jordan. you talking about crystal meth and then crack or mm-hmm. heroin. However it's being used, they have different sentences for people in prison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. another conversation maybe yeah. for oh. another day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, and that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, I just, I've, I've always been just a realist with things, and, and and sometimes that's why I know I could never, people used to ask me all the time, when are you running for something? I'm like, I ain't running for anything. I'm, I'm right where I want to be. I love medicine. It's what I do for a living, but I like being involved with things. Mm-hmm. But the the hypocrisy of, of things, you know, and, and you listen to people, not, that, that word deflection has become a, really a prominent term these days. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm always very real about things. If I'm going to be a hypocrite, I'm going to tell you I'm being a hypocrite. I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not going to front on that. Well, I'll say, yeah, I'm, I'm being a hypocrite right now because I want to be. I mean, but folks, this, a lot of times I'm saying people don't see, it's either they don't see it don't or want don't to want see to see it. Don't it. Want to see it. You know, but it's it's really unfortunate that, you know, that we still have a lot of that in this country. And it seems more now than it's in, in my lifetime than it did even. I want to ask the in, two the two female doctors, uh-huh. because you and I talked yeah. about this um, on a previous show. In terms of your professions, do you see more or fewer people becoming OBGYNs or becoming optometrists? Um 
because Dr. as Dr. Newman and I were talking about the the uh, particular African Americans coming into the industry uh, because of how expensive it is and so forth, and there's always this cry that we don't have enough black doctors. So, do you see people? avoiding it or coming into it dr jordan well it seems like at this point many people are actually going the business route or computer route that's where the money is if we follow the money business or lawyers or either computers and you know we talk about the pharmaceuticals even if we write prescriptions just to go back to to tie this together for narcotic because after i've just delivered someone had a baby someone with no epidural, someone who's not a drug seeker, and I give her 40 Percocet, which is to- like Tylenol number three, mm-hmm. and you can take one or two of those every four hours. So that's six times in a day. She could take two, so 12 pills in a day. 40 pills might last her three days. Right. And the pharmacy calls me because they don't think that's appropriate. Mm. And so that's when I have to get so on the phone like and say, a lot of well, guessing or, did or you go you to do? school? Did you write this? <laughs> this is my DEA. This is what I'd like her to have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, I think we all, I feel that. sometimes we're technicians yeah. yeah. and the insurances are telling us what to do, what medicine to prescribe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's switched at the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. So do you think all of this is causing people to say, "Never mind, I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want to be a doctor as a profession. I don't know well, if that's no, if, doing it yeah. because they won't know. We know that because we live it every day. Right, but, I, you know, I'll tell you what I think it is. It's just unfortunately so, I mean, this the younger generation in my experience, like like my children, none of my children want to go into medicine. They, they, and when I asked them, yeah, you know, I never pushed them ever. Mm-hmm. But they said, Dad, it's true. I don't want to work like you. That's I mean, I exactly see you coming. Right. I, you know, I said, I ain't, I'm not trying answer. to do that. You know, and so it really is, is they see with this technology and, you know, we are living in this immediate society. You know, yeah. everything has to be yesterday. So when you look at a profession where you have to spend years of training, mm-hmm. I mean, I have no regrets zero regrets on what I've done in my life. I, I, I mean, I love what I do. I, lo- I mean, this was meant for me. Mm-hmm. But everybody doesn't feel that way. I, I just tell people all the time, you do it because you the love of medicine. Don't do it because you're trying to get rich. That's not going to happen. Right. I mean, it's not because a lot of people may think we make a ton of money. They haven't seen our expense accounts. Yeah. I mean, it costs a lot of money to run a practice. To run your own practice. Yeah, it exactly. costs a ton of money. So um, go ahead, Dr. Um, Ramsey. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're actually seeing something a little bit different in optometry where the um, average uh, student is actually now female, where optometry used to be 90% male. Now it's almost 60% female of the graduating students coming out. But we're still struggling with um, um, minority representation in optometry schools. So, and, and also optometrists in underserved areas. So we, we actually need more optometrists, uh, and they're, you know, and women are going into it, but we're not seeing it in the, you know, the, the western part of the Virginia or, you know, or in areas where they don't have any eye care whatsoever. So. Mm. Yeah. That's the same thing with cardiology, too. And probably, uh, I can't speak to OBGYN, but we don't see, you, don't, you won't find as many uh, minorities going into cardiology or any of the subspecialties. Any of the subspecialties. Well, just period. You just don't see people going to medicine, period. And, and, you know, the other thing, though, we didn't touch on is how much it costs to go to medical school. Mm-hmm. I mean, compared to when well, I, I mean, went, but, it's like but it double. Was this, but, I mean, I mean, I understand it's double now, but it, but isn't that also based on today's dollars? I mean, wasn't it expensive for you to go to school? Well, yeah, it was expensive for me to go to school. But, again, you know, you think about the um, – what you because you got to repay all this back and and like the salaries are going okay, down. down you know That's i mean right. like there are some you know um specialties or like primary care where you have like a hospital practice may say I, i'm going to hire these um primary care docs, I'm going to pay them a ton of money, but that's not going to last so long. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul, but so long if, if you know, you're not making it the money right. that it costs them to have you, mm-hmm. they're going to lose, the, the honeymoon period that's is going to end. Yeah, that's the carrot to get you in, <laughs> but the honeymoon period is going to end pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And with the reimbursements steadily decreasing, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's hard to say, okay, you may, the dollars may be different, but it's like the expense is going up, but the income is kind of going down. So, the math doesn't make sense after a while. Does it concern you then if we're losing African-American doctors um, 
that from a patient's perspective, an African-American uh, patient, um, or for our community in general, if we have fewer doctors, does it concern you about the level of care? Um, because there are certain things culturally yeah. that are different that you all as African-American doctors are, I would believe, more attuned to or maybe more attuned to than maybe a doctor who it does not necessarily treat a lot of black patients. Well, what do you think, Dr. For, Jordan? For OBGYN, at least right now, even the physicians who are out working in, I would say, our generation, they're stopping the obstetrics. It's not worth yeah. it to, for some people. I and I'm just like Dr. Newby. I enjoy what I do. I can stay up for two days if I'm delivering the epinephrine. I can jump up and get to the hospital and deliver a baby by vaginal C-section, and then take five minutes and take a nap. <laughs> so I enjoy that. But yeah. the people who are coming out even today, they do not have the same hours that when we were in school. You were, say, in your residency, and you were there straight so many hours. Now there are requirements that they have to get so much rest or time off. So that cuts into the learning time or the operating time, the surgical time. So then when they come out, and you mentioned that they're expecting these exorbitant amount of salaries, mm -hmm. but then they bring less yeah, to the table. Less to the table. Yeah, and and I, they bring no patients. Yeah, yeah no. I 100% with you on that one. I think, the, to me, the worst mistake, I think they made in medicine was cutting those resident hours, to me personally. I mean, because medicine is not 9 to 5. It's not. I don't care how you shape it up. People are not going to always get sick when you think they should. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just doesn't work that way. And mm -hmm. and to de and you have to learn how to deal with stressful situations. I mean, I, I, I was shocked when they did it because, I mean, I went through it. You went through That's it. We correct. all went through it. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I didn't, think we were better yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly, because we learn how to deal with stressful situations. When you, when you look, at, and it's not you by yourself. I mean, you know, as, a, as an intern or resident, if you're an intern, you got residents above you, you got your attending above that. I mean, yes, you may... Um, be tired when you make some decisions, but that's why we have a team approach. Is you, it's, you yeah, it's, it's, it's the intern, the residents, the attendings, the nursing staff, and everybody plays a role. So if if a doc says something, like if you meant to say Tom, all he says something else. I mean, the nurse is gonna say, "You sure that's what you want?" I mean, we so had checks and balances. Yeah, it's checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but it, it taught you how to deal with a situation at any given time, you know, and, and again, it's like, you know, I mean, now you, you deal with some of this younger group of docs, you know, they ready to like, I mean, five o'clock, I'm out of here. I gotta go. I gotta you know, go. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't work that way. You know what? This has been a fabulous hour. I know we started out talking about the, um, medical, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the online testing, but it has gone to a lot of different places, but that's, I think that's important yeah. because I think that the more we as lay people understand what you all doctors go through on, um, from that perspective, that we can build our relationship a little bit better. So, right, Dr. Great. Ramsey, thank you so very much. Thank Dr. You. Jordan, thank, thank you. you. Keith, as always, thank Pleasure. you so very much. And thank you for listening to Another View today. Please go to our pod, our website, anotherviewradio.org and download the podcast. You can find us on iTunes um, at whro.org or wherever you find your podcast for your listening pleasure. Our theme music was composed and performed by Jay Sennett. Lisa Godley is our show producer. Victor Bowen is our audio engineer and Trey Watson is our Another View intern. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Thank you so very much for listening to Another View.